Hello, my beautiful little mugglets. So, Epic Seven has just announced a new Moonlight Five Star Hero, Moonlight Tywin, aka Ambitious Tywin. That's pretty exciting. He looks completely different from his non Moonlight variant. Uh, finally, we got a five star Husbando up in here. It's been a while. So, starting off with his design aesthetic, I really, really like it. Very regal, serious dangerous looking very nice design in my opinion as far as i got from his backstory unlike normal tywin ml tywin is a bit of a sociopath only really cares about people if they're useful to him and he'll you know be friendly warm-hearted and trustworthy to you know the ones he regards as useful but those he deems useless become nothing more than stepping stones on his journey to gain power so down here they note here information provided in this video is subject to change upon release so Take it with a grain of salt, but here we can see his base stats, and I'm really happy they have the English in parentheses here this time. Uh, that was a little bit confusing with Valencia, but yeah, I think we got the gist of it regardless, but yeah. He's a knight, so naturally has pretty low attack. Not super bad for a knight, I think, but uh, yeah, health, pretty good. <laughs> Lower than Valencia, which is funny, but Valencia has, like, I think one of the highest base healths in the game. Anyway, 104 speed, yeah. Pretty average stats for a knight, I would say. Nothing super standout this year. Imprint and imprint concentration are both health. So a knight doing knight things. He might be the first light knight. I know we have some like tanky light units, like some of the healers, like uh, Ruel or whatever, but he might be the first light knight. Five star anyway. So taking a look at his ultimate first, it doesn't seem super special for a five star moonlight to be honest. Uh, but you got up to 80% chance to decrease speed and make them unhealable. We have HP scaling, which is pretty usual for a tank. Um, but yeah, speed down is a pretty rare debuff and can be useful for some of those uh, Hall of Trials bosses uh, because some of them require speed down for that extra 50% damage and it's kind of hard to get that. You know, Dizzy has it, she can be useful for a lot of them. I don't really understand though why it's not 100% chance to be honest though. Like it should be 100% chance. Uh, maybe it will be once he's released because decreased speed and unhealable aren't like super special or anything. The soul burn effect is not very useful either. Skill cooldown is decreased by two turns. So two turn cooldown once it's plus four. But yeah, that's his ult. Currently unimpressed, but let's keep looking. If HP scaling is really nice, then yeah, okay, sure. Uh, but he does still have two other skills we have yet to look at. So passive skill, battle command, 75% chance to dispel one debuff from all allies when the caster is debuffed after being attacked once per turn. Oh, okay, and that can go up to 100% chance. That's actually a pretty solid passive. Passive AOE debuff removal. The fact he does have to be debuffed for that to proc is fair, actually, I would say, because at least how it reads here, it seems like he can do the debuff removal on the same turn he is debuffed. Debuffed after being attacked. So he can go from undebuffed, someone hits him, gives him provoke or something, and then he can instantly wipe that along with, you know, one debuff from his allies. Uh, I think that's pretty good if it works how I think it does. Can definitely turn the tide in a lot of battles and pretty tricky to deal with on defense just from that passive. But let's see. It won't bother my Judge Kisa as she doesn't debuff, but you know, for a lot of other teams. We might be able to see that in action here. Bazaar is going in there. Hopefully debuff. He's currently undebuffed. Yeah, you see that? Awesome. That's pretty nice passive. And then we got his basic skill, Icy Sword Storm. Attacks with a sword with a 6% chance to provoke for a turn. Ah! Uh, removes four souls from the opponent. <laughs> what? Damage dealing. All right, yeah, okay, he's he's definitely more interesting now. Four souls? It still wouldn't mess up Judge Kisa unless he is somehow faster. If he's faster, then, then yeah, I guess it could, but most of the time if you're slower with the cleave team you lose anyway but yeah i burn her s2 so that it's gone so even if you give him elbrus ritual sword or a counter set or whatever um she's not going to get messed up because her souls are already gone but again perhaps in some other teams maybe it seems that require 40 souls that could definitely mess something up there and of course any teams that aren't going to use soul burns on their very first attack because against ml tywin if you don't soul burn on your very first attack and he has counters going off you can't use soul burns anymore, you know? A lot of soul burns require 20 and you can only get up to a maximum of 20 from one book. So against my team, doesn't really matter, but but I'm sure it can screw up a lot of others. And then of course we have provoke as well, which is really nice. Uh, that goes up to 75% chance. I guess because it also removes four souls, that's fair. It's just Moonlight Cecilia's is 100% chance. But yeah, overall he definitely sounds interesting because of his I would say mainly his passive, actually. His basic can definitely hurt an attacking team if they're not careful with how they're soul burning. 
Um, his ultimate doesn't seem that powerful actually though. On his turn, I prefer to use that over his basic though, because you know, 75% chance to provoke. The soul stealing capabilities obviously only matters on PVP defense, where I think he's gonna be really quite good. It's gonna be pretty hard to easily counter him, especially if he can be doing some solid chip away damage as well. I'd say he's gonna be pretty weak to single target cleave though. Yeah, it's pretty hard to say really. He's obviously gonna be really good against uh, debuff teams, but you know, since he is going to be on defense and everyone can see what you have there on defense, I don't think people with any knowledge about this character are going to take a, a debuff focus team like Dizzy or something. I don't know. Honestly, th these are just first impressions. For PvE, again, probably some Hall of Trials bosses where they need decreased speed and also uh, debuff removals. A lot of them give your team a lot of debuffs, but like... Besides that, he doesn't really provide much support. Some form of cleanse, which is nice, you know, you could give him an Arius for PvE, but then Provoke is kinda not useful anywhere in PvE. Obviously, Draining Souls is not useful outside of Defense PvP. Or Real-Time Arena. That's a thing now, too. He could probably be pretty good in Real-Time Arena. Definitely. In fact, Real-Time Arena is probably what he was made for. I mean, sure, they could still just choose not to attack him so that no debuffs are cleansed, unless he provokes then they kind of have to attack him and cleanse debuffs as long as he's debuffed. Unhealable speed reduction are both solid in most cases on PvP, and obviously both teams are on offense in real-time arena, but, you know, you both can potentially have souls. So I think it'll take a bit more thought. Again, you know, his skills could also just be changed before he's actually released, so. but most likely they'll be pretty similar. And yeah! Those are pretty much my thoughts. Feel free to drop your own in the comments down below. Leaving a like for them to enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.